Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today we're going to be talking about anatomy. Anatomy is an amazing word ever since I discovered that you can use this word to solve problems or give yourself leverage over some kind of problems. I've been using it ever since. Anytime I encounter some kind of new problem that I've never seen before, literally the first thing I ask myself is what is the anatomy of whatever it is that I'm looking at? Not only does it give me the ability to talk about the subject, it also gives me the ability to see the different components. And well, because I'm a programmer, I can see the different components. I can ask myself, well, why doesn't this component do these things? Or why can I not define such and such components? Or how can I compose these components? And what other abstract ideas I can try to force onto these components and if any of them are useful at all. Don't forget if you're enjoying the video, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. I have a C Sharp course that is out. If you would like to know C Sharp and programming as I do, I highly recommend you check it out. With that, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, we have a couple of sinks over here. Before we take a look at any code, we have to understand the analogy and that you can use anatomy to essentially solve problems not, that are not just related to programming. I personally have been in a situation where my sink has had a problem or actually wanted to do some work or extension on the sink, right? So we'll take a generic sink like this. And before I can even hope to use or extend something, right? What kind of questions can I ask about the sink? Like if I cannot talk about specific parts, like what is this thing called? The root of the whatever this thing is? Like what do you call this? These are obviously handles because doors have handles so we can actually point to the door to the handles, sorry. Uh, what is this area called? What is this area called? What is this area called, right? What is this? There are all these different parts of the sink and you can point to them using language, right? So if I want an even little shred of hope that I can describe my problem or even say that this is my problem, this is what I want to do, then I can start solving it. If I cannot use words to describe the problem, how can I even think about solving it? This is where anatomy comes in. I've been in a situation where I wanted to extend this bit and have a little you know, an additional thing that I want to plug into it and have a spray thing, right? If I don't know the vocabulary, I can't even talk about it. So this is what you do, right? You take your sink, you Google for sink anatomy, and suddenly you see all of these various things and you realize that, hold up, this component right over here, this is not even the sink. The sink is like this much bigger system. What we're talking about here is indeed a faucet, right? So what I want is this area right here and this area belongs to a faucet. So this is where you do the same technique and you just say faucet anatomy. And now we're looking at a much different thing and I can say, all right, this thing on the end of the spout is called an aerator. From programming, I can say that, look, I want an aerator adapter. So I can change the size or I can change whatever thing that I'm trying to plug into it, right? So I want this to be slightly generic. And obviously, if you want to fiddle about with any other parts of the sink, you know what they're called, okay? With this little prelude, we can start talking about code and code anatomy, okay? Here we have a class and the class is going to have some members and we have a field, we have a property and we have a method. The method also has some anatomy to it. It has a return type, it has parameters and it has a returning value with a return statement. It also has a body and the body acts as the execution scope, okay? Now the parameter can be particularly interesting. When you're talking about being inside of the function, you are accepting a parameter A. When you're outside of the function calling the function, you are supplying five as the argument for parameter A, right? Argument goes in, parameter is consumed within. This is where you can personally take a challenge for yourself, open up the code that you have, take a look at it and see can you just name the pieces that are out there? What is the anatomy of your code? You should be a professional. You should know this stuff. If I know the anatomy of my code, when I'm doing things like reflection, I can say, look, 
I am looking for a field. So in here, I want to get a field with some kind of name. I can reach into this field and a field will have things like what kind of type is it containing? What kind of name does the field have? And then this thing, what is this thing called? Do you know? If we attach some other of these same things, let's say static read only, this is an access modifier, this is a modifier, this is a modifier as well. If these are called modifiers, knowing these things as a modifier, you can now actually start pushing the boundary of knowledge a little bit and you can say, well, look, a class is a thing, an object is a thing, a function is a thing, I can create these things. If I can say that, okay, modifiers are these things as well. How come I cannot do modifier or something like this, right? So my underscore mode, let's say that we're gonna use snake case over here. And I just wanna slap it on there, right? So this is what I'm talking about when you start seeing all the individual components you start to think about, well, how can you actually compose them or what kind of crazy things can you try and do with them? Because let's say you had something like this, like on read, you understand what this is doing, all right? You're modifying this field to execute this on read function whenever, well, you are reading the value from it, right? So then you can do event, emit, and whatever else. Knowing the anatomy of your code not only gives you the vocabulary to reason about your code and about the problem, it also gives you the tools for innovation. Obviously, that specific example, some people will go, well, why don't you do it with uh, properties or function wrappers, adapters, whatever. That's not the point. The point is that we have identified a thing and now we're trying to extend the thing or try to use a thing, even though that it's not available to us. We've just realized that we are capable of thinking like that. We're not accepting the constraints that C Sharp is putting on us. We're free thinkers. We can identify a thing and potentially we want to say that that thing should do some other thing, right? A lot of things flying about, right? Hopefully that gives you a little bit of a better idea. Again, if we're talking about problem solving, let's say we have an HTTP server. We come back over here. I have the web server running. We don't have an actual endpoint. Primarily what I'm interested in is, let's say I have a fetch request that I want to execute. So here you can see I have an example. Let's say I do something like this, enter. Here I hit the breakpoint before the request finishes, right? I'm already invoking words like HTTP request. So with HTTP, you know that there is some kind of specification. A request is this thing that goes out from the browser to the server. So me saying a request, there's already direction involved. So you know, if there is a request in HTTP, there is also going to be a response. So there's going to be something coming back. If we take a look at the network, we're gonna see that there is some information about the request headers and then there is this request URL and the request URL has its own anatomy. For example, we have the schema, we have the address, we have the port, we have the path and then we have the query string. Being able to talk about a request URL like that when you come back to the code, when you go to the HTTP context because it's the context of HTTP. In HTTP, we have a request and we have a response, right? When we're talking about the request, we should be able to find this URL. So if I go to the request, I try to go for URL and this is where Microsoft is breaking the anatomy a little bit, right? Because the URL is its own component and then you have the request headers. The URL is sitting on the request. So I should be able to access the URL here but however, the headers are sitting besides the query and the query string. And in fact, if I remove this and I just go straight to the context and I go straight to the request, hopefully it's uh, not too small for you to see. You'll be able to see a bunch of things. One of the things from the anatomy, we can see that there is a schema for HTTP, what kind of protocol is being used and the method, including then the headers with all the relevant values. And then you have the cookie. And interesting enough, cookies is a special property on the request as well. Microsoft is again breaking this structure where cookie is indeed a header value. 
Cookies should be a special property that you can access on the headers, maintaining the anatomy of the HTTP request. And again, some things like content type, content length. At this point, the HTTP specification is essentially violated or the shape of it is violated. And now in addition to knowing HTTP, although it is not much in this situation, you now have to know the ASP.NET Core specific way of doing things. And this will be it. Hopefully this video gives you an idea of how to explore anatomy in your code and how powerful of a concept this can be for you. If you're still not convinced or you're saying eh, it doesn't matter, first of all, I challenge you to look through your code base, make sure that you can name various things and what they're called and then realize how being able to talk about these things helps you ask the correct question because then you know the correct problem so you can actually find the correct solution. Same as when you come to a doctor and the doctor asks what's wrong, you cannot say, oh, well, my fatibular bone is uh, thrombosis, whatever, right? You say, ouch, my arm hurts, please help. So then, you know, the doctor has to use his, her brain to figure out what the heck is wrong with you. And as a patient, you hope uh, that the doctor knows uh, what he or she is talking about. Your responsibility as a programmer is the same. You need to know what you're talking about. If you don't know the anatomy of your code, of the components you're using, of the protocols you're using, if you don't know the anatomy of your system, uh, you're in trouble. Not only do you look amateurish to your customers, you look amateurish to your peers. Imagine if you just graduated doctor school or whatever and you go into a hospital and you talk to top level surgeon and uh, he, well, I, I, I don't know, you pass me the brain neuron and you're like oh what is a cell you know you look stupid you want to know what you're talking about anyway uh, this will be it for this video hopefully you've enjoyed it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you did if you have any questions make sure to leave them in the comment section if you would like to support my work please do so on my patreon a link is in the description if you choose to support me you get access to source code of my videos a very big thank you to all of my current patron supporters your help is very much appreciated as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.